Good afternoon and welcome to our uh, sixth form new parents introduction evening and um, to take us through um, a, a welcome and an overview of the sixth form at Strodes and Windsor College is Principal Amanda Down. Thank you Fiona. Good evening and welcome to our information event for all new parents and carers. My name is Amanda Down and I'm the Principal of Strodes and Windsor Sixth Form Colleges. I'm joined this evening by Fiona, who you've just heard from, who will be managing the Q&As this afternoon. There will also be an opportunity for you at the end of this presentation to join one of our chat rooms where members of my team will be on hand to answer any specific questions that you may have regarding programmes of study, um, student services, including travel and bursary information, or additional learning support requirements and questions with regards to that. As part of the Windsor Forest Colleges group for the last four years, Strodes and Windsor Sixth Form Colleges have gone from strength to strength, and we are immensely proud of our successes, including our good rating from Ofsted in November 2019. Our students continue to achieve amazing results for both A-levels and Level 3 BTECs, and last year we had a 99.7% pass rate, almost that elusive 100%. Our high grades continue to improve and our level three BTECs continue to have that 100% pass rate. Excellent results have ensured that all of our learners have moved successfully onto the next stage in their journeys, whatever that may be. For some of them, that's progression to university. For others, it's progression to further study with us here at the college on one of our level four courses. For others, it's a progression onto higher apprenticeships or training schemes, and for some, it's progression into the workplace. Whatever their destinations are, here at Windsor and Strodes, we understand that success is so much more than just exam results. They are, of course, absolutely vital, but it is much more than that. And as sixth form specialists, we are perfectly placed to provide the bespoke and high level support and guidance that your sons and daughters will need to help them to succeed and achieve their ambitions. We believe that the cornerstone to success for all of our students is based around students, parents, carers and staff working together as one unified team. We have high expectations and ambitions, both for ourselves and our students, and remain dedicated to maintaining excellent teaching and learning and high levels of support. Our key priority remains to ensure that Strodes and Windsor continue to be close communities. We are small to medium sixth form colleges, and it puts us in a very unique position. We aim to ensure that every one of our students feels safe at college, is happy and successful and able to progress onto the next stage of their lives. Sixth form colleges are unique and special places. We are the bridge between school, university, work, whatever that next stage may be. This is actually the shortest period of time that students will be in any one place of education. From seven years at primary school, five years, key stage three, key stage four, post 16 is only two years. And in fact, when you take out holidays, 18 months, and yet it is the most vital period of time for students because it really will help them to prepare for those next steps and enable them to go on and be successful. It's a life defining stage and therefore it's really important that students make the most of the opportunities on offer to them, are committed to their studies and work hard. Now is the time to make a difference. The shift to study in at post 16 is one of opportunities and excitements, but it's also one of challenges. And we're very realistic about that with our students. It means a more focused programme of study for students who will move from studying eight to 10 different subjects at GCSE to a combination of just three subjects for most students. For those students undertaking an extended diploma, of course that reduces to just one subject. It offers students the chance to specialise in the subjects that they're most interested in, but it does require those key elements of commitment, hard work, perseverance to ensure that success is guaranteed and to maximise all the opportunities available. Students will have four and a half hours a week of 
salt time for every subject that they study, but they are expected to undertake exactly the same coming out of that. Roughly speaking, we say it should be 10 hours of learning per subject per week. There's a lot of focus on independent learning, and we help our students in that transition period from school into post-16 study to learn to become successful independent learners. The percentage at schools is often talked about as being 90% teacher, 10% student. It's flipped by the time you get to university. So 10% lecturer, 90% student. And we are the bridge in between. As parents, we would ask for your support in encouraging students to develop good study habits and to make the most of their time with us, to utilize the resources on hand here and to ask for the help and support that they need. It's a key factor for many of our students, but in order to help them engage fully with every aspect of their learning, we would ask for your support in helping us to encourage them to be positive participants in their lessons and to be active citizens in our communities. On the screens in front of you, I'm just going to put up a couple of timetables, examples of timetables from both colleges to give you some understanding of what it might be. Every student will have as part of their programme of study a tutorial session, but they will also have independent learning. There are various opportunities for our students to undertake different enrichment activities. And of course, every student will need to be undertaking an industrial placement or work experience during their time with us. We understand that many students find the transition from GCSE to level three study challenging, whether that's for A-levels or whether that's for BTEC vocational qualifications. The focus on becoming an independent learner and managing your own study time outside of the classroom, as well as processing new course content itself, can be really tough. And different students will find that the trough of sorrows comes at different points for them. That barrier when it feels as if you're not getting anything right. We can help students to overcome that, but we need them to engage with us. And we would ask, therefore, that parents and carers help us to ensure that students stay on the right track. To be a successful student, it means attending every lesson. A lesson missed means that learning is missed, which can, of course, have a negative impact on a student's overall achievement. Studies that were conducted a few years ago estimated that a 10% loss of attendance meant a drop of one grade. So you can see how quite easily you can do it down in terms of your aspirations and your grade achievements. Students should therefore only be absent if absolutely necessary. And we would really ask for your help and encouragement in making sure that students who are feeling that they've got a few sniffles or really need a duvet day are encouraged to get up and get out and get to be here and with us. If you're here and with us and you're committed and you're engaged, we can help you to be successful. We ask you to help us encourage our students to be fully engaged with their learning. We expect them to do their best in every aspect of their programme of study. We ask them to engage with us, to complete the preparation work that is needed. And as parents and carers, we would ask for your help in encouraging them to seek advice and support if they are having difficulties or if they're having challenges but to persevere with this new chapter of their learning. We encourage our students to have a growth mindset, to see things as possibilities, to see things as positive challenges that will only help them to get better, to be curious, to be positive about life and learning as we guide them through the next two years of their study and support them on their way out from us and onto the next stage. We encourage our students to be committed and diligent in their studies, but also to have a clear vision of what it is that they are hoping to achieve at their time to their time with us. We find that the students who are most successful are those who have a clear vision, have a clear idea of where they want to go. This doesn't mean that every student needs to have a set career pathway in mind, but it does mean that they need to have clear goals, things that they want to achieve at the end of this even if that means really good grades in their subject choices. 
Success at level three requires effort. We will help our students to identify and understand what behaviours and characteristics equal success. A structured approach to work, practising key and appropriate skills, and having a positive attitude, even when faced with difficulties and challenges. Within our core studies and tutorial lessons, students will work on what is needed to be successful and make that successful flying start into the post-16 study. And we would ask you to encourage your son, your daughter, to persevere if things get a little bit tougher than they have been at GCSE. And again, that all important part to ask for help and support when they need it, whether that's with time management, whether that's with independent study, or whether that is simply with understanding new and key concepts for their subjects. Supporting students' success is not just about what takes place in the classroom. For us, it's much more than just our students' academic studies. Whilst this is absolutely key and vital to achievement and progression, we understand that there are a whole range of factors which can impact and influence the lives and successes of our students. The services and support that we offer seeks to remove the barriers to learning that some of our students may face, as well as providing opportunities to stretch, to challenge, to enrich and equip them as proactive citizens of the wider world. If you have any specific questions about these, please join one of our specific chat rooms at the end of this presentation, where we will be able to answer more specific questions about the support that is on offer. We hope that our students will progress well and we take great delight and pride in recognising and celebrating the achievement of our students. But we also have robust systems in place to pick up students who are a cause for concern. Unfortunately, sometimes this means giving students difficult messages. You need to work harder. You need to be on time. You need to buckle down if you're going to get the right grades, if you're going to be successful. And this is when our personal tutor system and our core studies programme can really help our students. We also encourage our students to consider their wider programme of study and to undertake additional opportunities which complement their core programme of study. This may be participating in one of our many and varied enrichment activities, including Duke of Edinburgh, undertaking community volunteering or an additional qualification, such as the extended project qualification or the Gold Arts Award. For every single one of our students, work experience or industrial placements are now a key part of their programme of study. And this will take place for us all new students in their first year. For students on a full A-level or mixed A-level and vocational programme of study, work placements will take place at the end of the May half term. And we would ask for your help and support with this. As with all other aspects of our community, we are looking for ways in which to continue to offer students this broad and various experience through virtual and other means. And we would ask for any assistance that you can give us with this to come forward. We firmly believe that listening to our learners is what is part of the key part of being a student here at Strodes and Windsor. We all like to be listened to. We all like to feel that our views are important and that they're being heard and that we're being responded to. It's not just about being listened to, it's about being heard and somebody responding. For us, it's also a central way of improving the student experience to ensure that we're maintaining high standards and that our students feel included and part of our communities. We operate a number of forums through which students' views are sought, including our student parliaments, our student liaison groups and our curriculum groups as well. Students have numerous opportunities to speak directly to members of the governing body. The SUE, which is our student union executive, has a very prominent part in our student communities and they speak for the students. They are an elected group of students every year who are there to organise events, but also to raise the concerns that the students may have to the senior team and to the governing body. Key to the success of all of our students at Strodes and Windsor will be the support that they receive from yourselves and from us, working together in partnership. At the college, we try really hard to get the balance right between giving young people increased autonomy and choice 
while still being there with guidance and support when it is most needed. We're very keen to involve our parents and carers in the life of the college and hope that you will feel part of our community in time too. We give out regular half-termly updates by email, which will be a summary of the news that is going on. We also publish regular progress reviews, which parents can access via the parent portal. Student parent review days will take place in March, and you will be invited to attend those alongside your son's daughters to listen to the staff and get updates on their progress. Our Meet the Tutor evening, which will take place on 7th of October, is an opportunity to come in and meet personal tutors and talk about that holistic wraparound care that we offer to all of our students. We aim to keep in touch with our parents and carers as much as we possibly can. And obviously, wherever you can give us any help, guidance, we would most welcome that. In due course, you will receive details of how to access our parents portal. Here, you will be able to check on your son, daughter's attendance, as well as their academic grades. As we know, young people at 16 are making crucial choices about their lives and their futures. We aim to be very ambitious for our students, and we want all of them to aim high and aspire to be the very, very best that they can. But at 16, 17, there are lots of distractions. Some of those are out on the high street, the various places that lull our students in from McDonald's at Windsor to Tesco's here in Egham. But it's really important that our students understand what's needed. And this is a good way for you as parents and carers to keep an eye on what's going on. All students will be allocated a personal tutor who they will see once a week. Personal tutors are really important to our college, particularly when students first arrive. We provide a number of ways in which we support our students, tracking attendance and progress, delivering key elements of holistic aspects and general skills, study skills, talking to students about how to remain healthy, how to remain safe, how to become democratic and responsible citizens and participants in the wider world as well as guidance and support for progression, whether that's to HE, to higher apprenticeships or employment. We offer bespoke support for some of our students who may need it. At each campus, we have a well-equipped learning resource centre with study support sessions available. There are quiet and more social spaces, online resources, expert staff, and one-to-one -one or small group appointments that students can make that will help them with study skills. So whether that is help with research, whether that is help with essay writing, whether that is help with time management, whether that's something far more fundamental, we are here to help and can provide that. Additional learning support is also here for those students who need it. Again, a wide variety of support available for those students with a range of identified needs. And again, in one of our chat rooms, you will find members of our ALS team who are here this evening to take any specific questions you may have. We're very much about providing the bespoke and individualized support that every single student needs, whether that is access arrangements for exams, whether that is additional help in the classroom with their studies, whether that is specific resources and materials. We pride ourselves on understanding and responding to every single student's individual needs. And we will do our very best to ensure that every student is very well equipped and able to succeed. All students coming to this college are offered individual support to help them prepare for life after college. And this is where our progression guidance comes into place. It ties in with our careers offering, and we're really proud of the fact that we have a career service here at the college. Again, students will be able to book one-to-one -one sessions or attend group sessions. It's a really key aspect of the post-16 offering, particularly for those students who are still undecided about what their future is actually going to be, about what their next steps may be. We offer each year industrial placement weeks, but also a variety of evenings 
a HE evening and an alternative to HE evening that allows students, parents and carers to come along and talk to various participants, whether that is the universities or whether that is employers and businesses. They will provide information on next steps, but alongside of that will be our careers team, who again are here on, on hand. Last year, we were delighted to have so many of our students move into university and into further education. And you can see here the split between them. Our students go to a wide range of universities, including 14 Russell groups. We're delighted that each year the number of students achieving and accepting places at the top universities, Oxford and Cambridge, continues to grow. I'm really pleased, I'm really delighted for our one student who won a scholarship to Princeton in the United States. Around 75% of our students every year progress onto courses or training in higher education or higher apprenticeships, which carry the same kudos. But part of our job here is enabling those students. And it is about the support and guidance that students will receive here that is very specialist and very bespoke that will enable them to go and to do that. We aim to give students a really supportive, strong, positive start. Particularly this year, we understand that new students coming to us have had a fairly disrupted time of education in their GCSEs. Six months of online learning through year 10 and year 11. It has been undoubtedly a very difficult and challenging time for every single one of them. With no formal exams, evidence for tags, those final grades, is reliant upon assessments that have been done in school. We will endeavour to make sure that every single one of our students gets that supportive and positive start that they need in order to be successful here at the college. Each student will receive an individual enrolment interview. That will be an opportunity for them to talk through the grades that they have achieved and their programme of study. Hopefully, your son or daughter will be able to progress onto their chosen programme of study. If, however, their grades are not quite what was expected, or if they've changed their mind about the subject choices, the enrolment interview is the opportunity for them to discuss those subject choices with one of our trained members of staff and to make the right choices for them. To consider the subjects as a group and to think about what their future ambitions will be. On the 3rd and the 6th of September, we will be running induction days for all of our new students. Students will be welcomed into the college and will come in for a few hours to be integrated into college life, to look at their timetables and to get a sense of what it's like to be a student here at the college. Over the first half term, there will be a number of very supportive transition programmes that will be running, induction programmes in every single subject that will help students to bridge the gap between GCSE and level three study. There are opportunities to change courses during the first half term, but only during the first half term. So we ask all of our students to really think very hard about the choices that they are making at enrolment and to be really clear about what they are doing. Students are committing to a programme study for two years and there are very few opportunities to change. So they need to be certain about what they are doing. We've already spoken about the fact that on the 7th of October, there will be an opportunity for parents to attend an event and an opportunity to meet the personal tutor team and to hear from them about the supportive start that students have received and some of our key messages moving forward. And of course, parents can also contact the college via the personal tutors or directly to subject teachers if you have any concerns at all. We are always here to listen and to help, and we will do our very best to ensure that students feel safe and comfortable here at this college from the very beginning. So, as we move to the end of this presentation, please do use our question and answer facility if you do have any queries this afternoon. And if you think of anything after us, please do contact us by email and we will endeavour to get back to you as soon as possible with a response. 
I hope that you found this information useful. As I said, please do come onto one of the chat rooms if you have any other questions. Please be reassured that we continue to do everything that we can to make our students feel safe and secure here at the college, that we continue to take into account COVID restrictions and the need to keep students and staff safe. Thank you very much for listening this evening. And I think we've got an opportunity to take any questions, Fiona, at this point. Yes, we do. Thanks, Amanda. That was really helpful. Lovely and clear as well, which I think was great. And we got a big thumbs up from uh, the audience that they could all hear you. Um, just for those that have already posted a lot of questions in the chat room, uh, Karen Griffiths, uh, our um, director of sixth form, is answering them as quickly as her <laughs> will allow her. Interesting time. Yeah. And those that are asking for information about the intro tours, uh, which at the moment are just for applicants, um, Karen is going to be sending the links to those um, and replying to you on that. Um, I'm just going to run back through some questions that have been asked, Amanda, so that um, you can answer them for the wider audience. Absolutely. Um, and also just for um, everybody to start posting questions in the Q&A, which would be great. Absolutely. OK, so um, first of all, um, people are just asking a bit about enrolment. So when we're going to start okay. enrolment this year, obviously the exam results are a bit yeah. earlier. So we will be starting enrolment in the week beginning the 16th of August. So enrolment uh, will be taking place over the, I think, the 17th, 18th, 19th and 20th. That will be the first week of enrolment here at um, Strodes and Windsor. There will be different days on each site and applicants will receive um, an, an invitation into an enrolment interview. They are individual enrolment interviews, so you will be have an invitation which will give you a date and a time when we're inviting you to come in. Great, thank you. And what, what if people are on holiday or anything? Is there anything they can do to rearrange those? If people are on holiday, we would ask them to contact the admissions department. What we would say to you is obviously, um, we would urge you as far as possible to try and keep those appointments. Um, unfortunately, we are having to respond to the early release of GCSE results. Um, and we are having to sort of move a little bit with that early release. We are also offering some um, help sessions or help desk after the release of the GCSE results. So if anybody has got any concerns or queries after those results have been received on the 12th, we will be available. Um, it is a phone line and Q&A session, but we will be available online to answer any questions that um, students, parents may have about results and about enrolment moving forward. Great, thank you. I think it, we're, we're going to be try and be as available as we possibly can. Uh, whether that's, you know, we'll have our live chat run Absolutely. now um, and we'll have some drop-in sessions. So that, and, and all the information about that will go on the website. So do keep an eye on the website for all the information regarding that. Plus, if you have already applied, we will be sending that out via a mailer, an applicant mailer. Um, that We do send those to the applicant. So parents do keep an eye out and ask your young person to let you know when they've received them. Um, okay, so another question, uh, important question, I think some, what, somebody's mentioned here that their son has changed their mind about their subjects. Okay. What, should they, what should they do about that? Okay, so there are two options there. One, you can either contact the admissions department and ask them to put it forward as a requested course change, or you can um, discuss that at the enrolment interview. Great. OK, thank Obviously, you. Obviously, I think the caveat I would put in there is um, student must meet the entry criteria. So please do check on the website, which will give you the individual entry criteria for our subjects. OK, great. Thank you. Um, if, if someone's had uh, an application and offer for Strodes, but then yes. decides that they would like to go to Windsor, do they have to go through a separate application process? I think that's a very good question. Um, normally, we try to interview students for jewels. So those people who've applied for those, we, we do try to interview them at the same time. Um, my advice there is to contact the admissions department and to explain that they've made an application to Strode and they've been made an offer that they'd like to transfer it to Windsor. Do you just check that the same subjects are available. There are a few that are quite niche to Strode's 
that aren't yet available at Windsor. So do please make sure that the subjects are the same, but if they are, please just contact the admissions department and, and arrange for it to be a transfer to Windsor. Great, thank you. Um, just working through some of these, lots of questions, so bear with me. Um, do both um, colleges offer every subject or do they travel between Strode's and Windsor? I think it's probably worth clarifying the relationship between right. the colleges. Okay, so Strode's and Windsor, we've got Strode's Sixth Form College and Windsor Sixth Form College. We are both part of the bigger Windsor Forest Colleges group and um, myself and Karen, <laughs> basically we, we are the senior team who oversee the Sixth Form provision. Um, no, students do not travel between sites for different subjects. We do bring some students over for enrichment activities to Strode from Windsor, but the subjects are very set for each um, college. So if you're enrolled at Windsor College, you are a Windsor College student. And if you are enrolled at Strode, you are a Strode College student. Um, there are some differences in the subjects that are offered and some differences in the qualifications that are offered. Most are the same, but there are some differences. We've got some new subjects coming on board at both campuses, which is kind of sort of a sharing of what we've introduced at other places. So this year, for example, at Windsor, we've got A-level graphics and we've got A-level philosophy coming online. This year at Strode's, we've got the diploma in criminology coming online. So there are some differences coming through. But some similarities as well. So hopefully that's answered. Great, thank you. Also, a number of people are asking about the intro tour. So um, in the chat okay. box, we have just posted the link to the booking emails. Um, just click on those. Um, they are very, very subscribed. Um, so um, fingers crossed that if you haven't booked yet, that you will still find a, find a space. And I, I think it's worth pointing out, Fiona, at this stage that they are just for students. So yeah. we are saying these are student only events. I really appreciate and understand that parents are interested and keen too. But we would ask parents to remember that every time a parent, you know, we, we have to keep this just to students, please. Um, one of it is to help us maintain some COVID safety but I'm restricting numbers, but also as well, this is about helping students to get some feeling of the college and a little bit of orientation to where they're going to be joining in August, September time. So please, I would ask for your help in this um, and your forbearance. These are student only events. Yep, great, thank you. Um, somebody's just asking about the new minibus service from Maidenhead, is this confirmed? Um, I can give you a little update on that because yes. I was talking to I was talking to the CEO today about it, and it looks like we will be planning um, at least one minibus, if not. And if the demand is there, then we will increase the the, the scale of that. Um, so, if um, anybody interested in that wants to um, uh, pop uh, on the chat or in the Q and A, their details, we'll make sure we we keep you informed of that. Okay, that's great. Um, just work, work it, looking through here. What about IT equipment? What, what would we expect students to have for their, for their course? Okay, for most courses, there is absolutely no need for students to have IT equipment. I think what I would say is that more and more students are wanting to use their own devices. And we do have a laptop leasing scheme whereby students can lease laptops from the colleges. Obviously, with the, the world that we've been in, with remote learning, students did need to have access to laptops. And that's partly why we've had the laptop leasing scheme and we've been loaning laptops as well to students. So there are facilities and there are resources there to equip students with laptops, but obviously students are also welcome to bring in their own devices as well. Um, we do quite a bit of work about internet safety and about ensuring that students are being responsible in using IT, but there is no requirement as such for students to bring their own or to have their own laptops. Yep. Okay, that's great. Um, a lot of people are asking about transport. Okay. Um, uh, we will just put the link to the transport page um, in the chat and just a reminder that our student support team will be on uh, the live chat, which you can access through our website um, yes. from six o'clock. So um, but we will just post the link in the main chat 
uh, for the travel um, options. And obviously, if anybody requires any financial support, we do have bursaries um, which can help with, um, with that. Um, again, just scrolling down. Somebody's just asking about, is there an online kind of parent system where they can monitor progress and- um, That's the pro portal system. So once students have enrolled, parents will get information about how to join it's called Pro Portal, um, and it's the parent portal side of it. And so parents will be provided with a login, and they will be able to see their their particular students' attendance and their progress on them. Great. Do you think you could explain the difference between the applicant interview and then the enrolment interview? So, just Absolutely. so that we're clear about that. So the applicant interview is the initial stage of talking through um, course choices and making that decision about whether or not actually the student does want to come to Strode Windsor and whether indeed we can offer them courses. The enrolment interview is that confirmation and is signing you up to be an official member of our team, official member of our community and family. So the enrolment interview, you will come in, hopefully you will have uploaded a photograph of yourself as the student and your results. And you will go through a process where we check your results, we check your personal detail, and we get you logged onto our system. And then we formally enroll you onto your chosen courses. We can't do that until we've got confirmation of your results. We want you to do it in person because we need to check. And we also ask you to sign something or our students to sign something called the learner agreement form. And that is where students are agreeing that this is the course of study that they're going to undertake, and therefore this is what they're committing themselves to for two years. It is part of um, an official legal document that we have to sign and we have to record because it's part of what we have to do as part of our auditing processes. So the enrolment interview is also that opportunity for students to really confirm that these are the right course choices for them. It's an opportunity to look at what else might be going in there and obviously to talk through it and make sure that it's absolutely right. It's an opportunity as well for students who have changed their mind, particularly those students who might have been interviewed right back at the very beginning of the academic year in September, October. If they've changed their minds about their course choices or the results aren't quite what they wanted them to be, or indeed if they're much better and they've changed their minds, it's an opportunity for those conversations as well. Does that help? That, def that, that, that definitely clarifies it, that's brilliant. Okay. Uh, we're getting lots and lots of questions coming through, so I'm just working through them here. Um, can students take four subjects and what are the requirements for them to be allowed to take four subjects? Right. So students, if students have got half or more of their GCSEs at grade seven or above, then we will consider a four course programme. However, what we would say to students is to think really carefully about why you want to do four subjects. Universities will only ever make offers based on three good A-levels. And it is much better to think about your workload and to have three really good A-level results than four mediocre ones. A-levels are a lot of work. Um, particularly in terms of that independent study and what students are taking on. We do offer the additionalities of the extended project qualification, the Gold Arts Award, which do allow students to add on what is the equivalent of half an A-level to their programme study. And we encourage our students to think of that as their kind of their fourth course, if that's what they're looking to do. But four courses is a lot of work. And as such, it's really a question of, are you going to be able to keep up with the workload and the commitment? Because you are committing for two years. This isn't something to try and then go, actually, you know, I've changed my mind at the end of your first year. So we do set that requirement of half or more GCSEs at grade seven or above, but then to really think about why you want to do four courses. So yes, it is most definitely a possibility. And we have a group of students every year who embark on four courses. Um, a number of those are our students who are taking further maths, which of course counts as two A-levels, but might be a whole variety of subjects, but to really think about whether that's what you really as a student want to do. Great, thank you. Um, and somebody's asking about the dress code. Um, I wonder if you could talk through that and, okay. class, and class sizes, just to okay. prime you with, this, with the next one. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so we don't have an official 
dress code policy as such and that we don't have a uniform. What we do ask our students to do is to dress in a manner that would be fit um, coming into a workplace. And we ask them as such to be respectful and mindful of the fact that they are in a mixed community and to not wear anything that might be offensive or might make somebody else feel uncomfortable. Um, and that becomes more of an issue, I have to say, in the summer months. Um, but it is just about being mindful of being careful about what you're wearing and making sure that it is suitable for work. And that includes footwear as well. So sometimes it's a health and safety issue. So no, no sliders, please. No slippers. Um, we do ask students to not wear hoods up when they are on site and around. Um, it's just not particularly very nice. It seems to be very fashionable at the moment for them all to have their hoods up and kind of skulking inside hoods. Um, I'm sure it's keeping heads and ears warm, but actually, you know, it, it's, it can be quite intimidating for some other students. And so again, we're back to that sense of, we are a small community and we ask people just to be mindful and, and considerate of how other people might be feeling. We do ask students not to wear coats when they're inside um, classrooms. You know, again, it's kind of being ready to work. You wouldn't be wearing your coat in work, um, particularly not when it's sort of one of these big sort of padded jobs. So again, it, it's just, we hope, fairly sensible, but about being, you know, you are in a workplace, you are supposed to be there to be ready and to be committed to work. And again, just that mindfulness and that consideration of other people and making sure that what you're wearing doesn't make other people feel uncomfortable. Class sizes vary depending on the subject. So some subjects tend to be much smaller um, and some subjects will be bigger. So class sizes on average are about 15 to 18. Um, some will be smaller, as I said, the maximum we try to cup it at is 20, but that's very few and far between and tends to be our more popular subjects so that indeed we can actually accommodate every single student who wants to do that subject. Great. Um, and somebody's asking what happens if your grades don't match your predicted grades, um, the one that your offer was made on. So what, okay. what happens so there? That's, that's, the, that's the conversation that we will have at enrolment. If it's going to prohibit you progressing with the programme that you had originally um, been offered and accepted a place for, then what we will do is that we will look at an alternative programme for you. So we will talk through your options, we will talk through your choices. Um, that might be some consideration of what are your longer term goals and how else can you get there with a different range of subjects. It might be a discussion with one of our careers team, but we will endeavour wherever possible to find an alternative programme for those students who haven't quite achieved the grades that they need. And sometimes that's looking at the vocational courses, which have slightly lower entry criteria than the A-levels. Great, thank you. Um, what if somebody doesn't get their English and maths? Okay, um, English and maths is fairly essential. So we would be looking for you to reset that. Um, I always find myself saying it really isn't me being mean. It is a government requirement. It's an absolute requirement that you sit GCSE maths and English or you continue to study GCSE maths and English until you've achieved your grade four if you are still in education and training. Um, for most students, that would mean looking at a level three, pro, a level two, sorry, programme of study rather than a level three programme of study. So I'm really sorry, without your English and maths, it will make you a level two rather than a level three. But again, it will depend on what your other grades are as to whether we can offer you a full level two programme. But that would be a conversation that we could have potentially once you've got your results on results day prior to your enrolment interview. Thank you. There's a lot of interest in the minibuses. Um, so oh. people are now wanting to know if there are going to be pickups from other areas. Um, <laughs> what I would what I can say is that um, we will I'll feed back this interest to the CEO. Um, and also we will be putting um, an expression of interest form on the website so that we can actually see whether or not this is something that we can start to develop as, yeah. as, a, yeah. as a tool. So that's great. Um, now, having a look, what about enrichment? Is there a list of enrichment topics? What kind of things would the, I know you've gone through it a little bit in the in the presentation. Okay. So the enrichment changes year on year. 
Um, it varies in terms of student interest. Um, we encourage students as much as possible to set their own groups up because we find that has greater buy-in. So this year we have a chess club, we have a choir, um, we have jamming sessions. Um, we're going to, I think there's going to be various sporting things, hopefully starting back up again this year. Um, so it, it varies from year to year. Um, our students currently are very passionate about um, environmental issues. So we've got environmental groups going on both sides. Debate Society, we've had college magazines. Um, we have Duke of Edinburgh, as I say, that will be continuing. So some of it is set, the sports clubs, the Duke of Edinburgh, some of those other opportunities, but many of them will vary from year to year. So at the moment, we haven't published that. That will be available when students join us in September as part of the welcome induction and the supportive start over those first couple of weeks. And we will be holding freshers fairs in the second week of term where students will be able to kind of go and see what's available and engage with some of those things. Yeah. And um, people are asking, a few people are coming in a bit late, so they might have missed yeah. some of the earlier stuff around um, the laptop um requirement and whether or not there are particular ones that we would recommend and also what about things like the stationary pens and all of that what assuming that learners need to come prepare <laughs> for, their, for their course absolutely um absolutely do you know it, it's a kind of a it's a sad thing isn't it to say you you need to come equipped you need to make sure that you've got paper you've got pen you've got um the equipment that you will need we would ask that students come with a basic supply of stuff in the for the first week and then staff will start to explain what is needed that might be a set course book that might be um some particular equipment and again if you go onto our website and you look at the year 11 transition work you will get some ideas there about the set texts to look at the exam boards that we offer um, so you get that kind of head start and you know what you're looking at in terms of laptops again uh, um, as i explained earlier we don't have a requirement for students to have laptops obviously many do many choose to have them um, some students absolutely prefer to be using a laptop rather than a pen. Um, what I would say is that, that that's a consideration in terms of exams, because obviously for most students, still got to handwrite those exams unless it's your proven way of, of working. So there are some issues around that. Obviously, with remote learning, there was a greater need for students to have access to a laptop or an electronic device. Um, and as such, we do have a student, we have a leasing scheme for laptops and we do have a loan scheme for laptops, but there, there is no essential requirement at this stage for having a laptop. What I would say is that we are still going to be in a world, I suspect, where we might have the occasional student who needs to self-isolate um, or indeed, you know, if, if we do have to go back into some sort of situation, then that would happen. But hopefully... That will not be the case and we will be full face to face and not back in the situation that we've had. Although as one student this year has pointed out, no more snow days because we'll all be online and happy to do it. Because we'll, <laughs> we'll Very true. Um, and talking a bit about COVID safety, um, yeah. you know, what is our testing regime at college and also the tours that are coming up next week? How are we managing those in a COVID safe way? OK, so I'll, I'll talk first of all about the tours. We will obviously be asking students when they're coming in to make sure that they are wearing a face covering. We will have hand sanitizer in place for them to use. Um, we're doing it in small groups and we will be spacing people out and asking them to kind of keep socially distanced from each other. And just again, to be mindful, we're making sure that the groups are staggered. So again, there should be very little overlap and as I said earlier, that's one of the reasons why we're asking parents, please, to, to bear with us and to not accompany students. This is really just for students. We want to minimise the number of people that we've got on site. We think it's really important for our students that they get that opportunity to come and see us, um, to meet us and to find out what the buildings look like. But we do need to make sure that we're keeping not only our new students, but our current students and our staff safe. And they will, of course, still be here and working. 
Um, for students, when they come in, we still are operating one-way systems. We have hand sanitizing and dispensing units around both colleges. Um, we are still asking students to be wearing face coverings in public areas. And we are still asking students to maintain social distancing when they're moving around. Obviously, it's, you know, it's very difficult, but we have continued that in classrooms. We continue to put into place COVID safe measures. Um, in terms of testing, students are able to collect self-testing kits and we are encouraging all of our students to undertake two tests per week as we do with our staff. So our staff take two tests a week and we encourage our students to do the same. It just helps. To, it's another sort of element to keep us all as safe as we possibly can. Thank you, Amanda. Um, we've got a, a parent asking about their uh, daughter who's an elite athlete. Okay, um, and and we're and we're a TAS college at Stroud. We are a TAS college, yes. So how how would they be supported in managing their training schedule against their um, their college requirements? Okay, so a member of our sports department it will be our designated TAS coordinator um, and they will be your liaison person so if you'd like to leave your your details on the chat um, then we will pick that up Fiona and I can pass those details on to the curriculum manager for sport who can get in touch with that particular parent to talk through the individualized support in more detail because it's probably a more individualized conversation to understand the training program if that makes sense yes yeah. Exactly. Um, I'll go back to that. There's still quite a lot of sort of similar questions here around what if we're not available for um, the enrolment dates. I know you're saying, please try if you can try to make those dates. And if not, let us know and we will yes. see what we can do to accommodate. Yes. Um, we will be enrolling in the, the week after. Um, and we will have some late enrolments in the very week after that. But obviously, you know, we are starting our inductions on the third, so we, we do need to get those students in and enrolled. So wherever possible, we are asking people to, to try and make those enrolment um, interviews, please, if they can. But let us know as early as you possibly can. So again, if you know now that you're not going to be available on certain dates, please let our admissions department know, and then we can reorganise your, your interview so we can make it at a later date. Great, thank you. Um, lots of questions around what is a typical um, uh, a typical day? What time will you be at college? How long will you be there? How many days a week? Right, okay, so the typical, I'm going to see if I can go back, sorry. Um, so, okay, I've got two typical days. The day, timings of the days are slightly different. So at Strode's, our day starts at 8.45 and finishes at four o'clock. Not every student will be in for every single lesson. A Monday morning at Strode's is our college meeting time. So there are no lessons first thing on a Monday morning. Um, and likewise, it is the same at Windsor on a Friday morning first lesson. So you will find that um, there are variations there. We try wherever possible to not have lots of trap time for students, but it doesn't always um, unfortunately necessarily work out like that, but we do do our best. Um, students may very well find, um, as this one is on this particular piece, that they've got days where they finish at quarter past two. You are free to go home then if you have nothing on them, but equally you may want to take advantage of the learning resources here. Um, this is uh, one from Windsor. This happens to be a BTEC extended diploma in creative media, and you can see it does span across all five days. Um, it, this one has actually got um, some GCSE maths in there as well, uh, and the independent study and core studies as well, it's in there as well. Slightly different timings at Windsor, so we start at nine o'clock and we finish at quarter past four. The timings are different um, for the two colleges, simply because we try to match up with the train times. Um, we, we try to sort of match it so that students are, are getting to us on time and we're not completely completely out of sync with the trains coming in or leaving indeed from the stations. So slightly different days, you will find some students don't have um, something on every single day, so they may only be in four days a week. 
Um, some students will have something on every single day. And as I said, we don't have a morning registration. Students are registered in every single class. So attendance is tracked by subject and by class. So you can see and we can see whether or not you really don't like a Thursday morning or a Tuesday afternoon or whatever it may be. So it's, it's quite a good way for us to track. Um, but it does mean that each student's timetable is unique and different. Great, thank you. Um, any, I know we talked a bit about the English and maths. Yes. Um, is there opportunity to take any other GCSEs uh, when in your year 12? So um, we offer them for those people who are on a level two program of study. So we offer GCSE combined science here at Strodes alongside GCSE maths and English. And at Windsor, we offer the GCSE science pathway. So again, they are very narrow, but we are about, um, programs of study at level two that will allow our students to progress on to level three. Students can, of course, if they want to as private candidates, sit GCSEs as resits here as a centre. Um, those will need to be in as private entries by the middle of September. And obviously that's, that's something that we will give more information to students about when they come for induction and in those in, in that initial week when they're with us. Um, there will be an online form to complete and then students will need to go to the exams office at either site uh, and obviously negotiate and sort out payment for those exams. But if you're enrolled on a level two programme, there is the option there to, um, as I said, take GCSE sciences, but as a general, no, I'm afraid, afraid we don't. Okay, thank you. Quite a few people are trying to book the tours because they weren't aware. I mean, we do send our applicants to the applicant <laughs> rather than to the parents, um, and they're full now. Um, well, I, I think mean, we will we will look to see if we can put on some more days because I think we're, we're, it's proven very popular. So we will go back and have a look, and we will release some some more days and some more times. Um, and Fiona, I guess we can send out another message. Yeah, because everybody that's registered today, we have your details, we'll make sure that we notify you of any additional dates and times. Obviously, to keep everything COVID safe, we have to restrict the numbers of people on site. So it is a bit of a, um, a tightrope that we're walking at the moment, isn't it? It is, yes. And um, we apologise for that. But equally, we want to make sure, as I said, that not only our new students but our current students and our staff are kept safe and we are still in restrictions um, for the rest of this term so please bear with us we're not under normal circumstances yet somebody just wanted a bit of clarification around the dress code mentioned working clothes um, I think you meant being ready for work didn't you rather yes. than that business business clothes yes. so, no, no, so no, we're, not, we're not asking for it to be business dress as such so I'm not expecting people to turn up in suits um, I think I might have rebellion on my hands but uh, what we are asking for them to do is, is to dress in a way that means that they're ready for work so please don't turn up in your pajamas um, please don't turn up in short shorts um, I'm sure parents you all know what I mean uh, we ask you know people to think about not having inappropriate slogans or signs symbols on t-shirts sweatshirts um, to make sure that tops are not too revealing whether male or female um, it, it's really not appropriate for um, a mixed college and obviously, as I said earlier, it can make some people feel uncomfortable. And that's what we ask our students to, to do, is to be mindful about the fact that we are a community um, and both colleges sit in the middle of a wider community as well. So it isn't just about when you're on college site, it is about when you're out in the wider community and you are a representative of Strode or Windsor Sixth Form College. And just being mindful of that and what you're choosing to wear, please. Thank you. Um, somebody's a, a enrolled for art, politics, philosophy. Are there any costs for art supplies books? Uh, yes, there will be costs um, for art supplies. Again, if you go onto the website on the year 11 um, transition stuff, there will be some details about the pack. But again, that will be presented in the induction period. So in those first couple of weeks, when you're joining the courses, they will talk to you about the things that you will need and, and the supplies, which you can buy from us at sort of, it's a cost package, basically. Yeah, 
Great. Um, just a question that actually came in quite early on. Um, I've gone back up the list of questions. Um, <laughs> There, somebody was saying, "What you know? What if there is an issue when the student is at college? Is that who would they talk to?" As in the student themselves, or parents either. Okay, um, so I'll start with the students. Students are encouraged wherever possible. If they've got a concern or an issue, there are a number of places that they can go. They can either go to talk to their personal tutor. They can go up to our student services department and speak to somebody up there who, if they are distressed, upset, will keep them you know, safe and concerned until we can find somebody to talk to them and find out what's happened. Um, we will obviously have um, subject staff so they can go and talk to one of their subject teachers or they can come and talk to one of the senior teams. So there are lots of places for students to go. In addition, there's our learning support team who are always on hand and available. And um, if anybody has got any kind of sort of real concerns or just wants a friendly face to talk to, they will be available as well for students to pop in and see and talk to them. So hopefully that's the students. Parents, if parents have got any concerns, again, they can always call in to reception who will try to direct their call through. Please bear in mind that staff aren't necessarily available because they will be teaching. So it will be a case of taking details and getting somebody to call you back. Um, or indeed you can email. So again, email subject staff, email um, personal tutors and they will get back to you. Again, we would ask you to bear in mind that you know we do, we do try to keep responses to working hours. Um, just for the well-being of our staff as much as our students and our parents. Um, but we will endeavour to get back to you as soon as we can. So email is probably the best means, unless it's an absolute emergency, by which point, of course, you know, call in and that will get passed on to the relevant person to resolve that or get back to you. Great, thank you. Amanda, we've got still loads of questions coming through, but I know that we've got all our tutors, our learning support team, our student support team are all available to answer specific questions online on our website. So please just go to, to the windsor-forest.ac.uk and I'll put the link in the chat so you can just easily click on it. Um, and um, click on the chat box and then just ask your question. We'll point you towards the right person. All the chat is is private, so you won't be it won't be being uh, shared publicly. Um, and so therefore you can have a one to one conversation. Um, I will uh, just popping that onto the chat box now. So if anybody wants to click on that link, you can go over to join the chat. Um, the other issue is that we, what we will do is we will summarize all of these key points, because lots of people are asking the same questions, um, into an email. So we will actually summarize them and answer them in an email that will come out to you in the next day or so. Um, and we'll give you key contact details as well if you have any further questions. Um, so you can talk to, um, say, our, our learning support if you've got any issues around uh, requiring support at college, student support if you want to find out about transport, finance, and um, bursaries um, and you can also um, talk around curriculum issues as well. Um, I think there's a slight glitch with getting the talk uh, live um, so um, bear with us and we will get that up as quickly as possible. Um, whilst they're doing that shall I ask you a couple more questions? I was going to say keep the questions coming Fiona. <laughs> yeah okay. Um, what if somebody decides they don't want to come to the college once they've got their results? That's fine. If, they, if you change your mind, please just let our admissions department know and, and we will make sure that that's processed through for you. But we really hope you, you are going to come and join us. Yes, definitely. Um, somebody's trying, we're trying to sort our chat box now. So just bear with us, please. Hopefully it will be live at the moment. I don't, we, we have it live every day. So it would, it would be typical that it wouldn't, it wouldn't work this evening. <laughs> How often do people, do students see their personal tutor? Once a week. Yeah. Once a week, there is a personal tutor session, but obviously, you know, if students feel that they, then they need more help and support, then they can go and find their personal tutor at, at any point. Yeah. Um, in, that many of our personal tutors are also subject teachers as well. So obviously it depends on if they're teaching or not, but yes, they, I mean, you know, students can go and find them at different points, but they will see them once a week for a tutorial session. 
Yeah, great. OK. Um, what about the, the summer work that's set in July? Um, I know we've been busy loading that onto the website. So, um... yes. So what we've done is we've collated and pulled together um, some summer work. It's transition work to help students get used to the ideas that there will be at post-16 study. Um, there is work that is linked to every single subject with some suggestions of things to do, um, things to read, things to watch, all kinds of things that people can be engaging with, podcasts, um, places to go and visit, if indeed you, you get the opportunity, but lots there, plus some summer work to complete. Um, a really good idea because obviously it will be quite some time since students have been in learning and in the classroom between then when they come back in and join us in September. So a really good idea for students to be doing that. For those students who have um, applied to do A-level maths, hopefully you will have been contacted or students will have been contacted with um, an invitation to join again a transition maths programme. Um, and if you haven't or not aware of that, if you leave your details, then we can pick that up and get our maths team to follow that up with you. Um, really recommend and really encourage every student to go online and have a look at that year 11 transition work. It's really important and a really good first stepping stone in helping you to make that flying start to be successful when you join us. Great, thank you. Well, I'm pleased to tell you that our chat is up and working. So um, please just scroll down to the bottom right hand side of our website on the homepage. You'll see the little chat box and then just pop your questions in there and we'll try and team you up with the relevant person to answer your, your personal questions. Bear with us, we have a lot of people in this meeting tonight. We've had 300 people join us. Um, and so we are working through as quickly as we can. Um, if you don't get an immediate answer, you know, grab a cup of tea and then pop back to your computer and we'll, we'll, we'll come back to you as quickly as we can. Um, but thank you so much. And uh, we will be following up with the recording, uh, with a summary of all the Q and A's, all the key contact points, um, so that you know that you can get all your questions answered. Thanks, Amanda, that was a great presentation. Thank you very much, everybody, and I look forward to meeting you at some point in the future, whether it's at um, one of our hopefully face to face events or indeed come join us for our open evening. Hopefully that will again be face to face in October time. But thank you very much for joining us this evening and for listening. Thank you. Thank you.